good to see you. You said that this past week was both a blessing and a curse. What effect do you think the time off is going to have on you guys, given that this is the longest break you guys have had since the All-Star break? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm curious to see. Um, I think it's both ways. You know, obviously Portland was playing at a really high level uh, to close out the season uh, to avoid the play-in. Um, and when you're playing at a high level, you want you want to keep that flow, that momentum going. So, um, but I tell you, watching the games today, it doesn't seem like teams really missed a beat with the week of preparation. Uh, the one thing I will say, Mike, and I think it's probably true for every playoff series today and tomorrow. Um, it's been a long week. You know, we've, we've thrown a lot out of our guys mentally, physically. So I think there's just a lot of excitement to get out there and finally play game one and, uh, and kind of go out there and compete. Uh, but um, we had really good practices. Our guys did a great job of focusing all week long. And now we'll see what game one brings. You know, obviously, um, it's going to be a hell of a challenge, as we've talked about. But um, you know, then we'll make the necessary adjustments as we go along. We'll go to Katie Wingy next. Hey, Coach. I, I heard a little rumor that Jamal Murray might be in the building tonight, and I, I wanted to ask what could he provide from the bench or just as a support system for your guys in terms of his voice in the series? Yeah, I mean, um, Jamal's the leader of this team, you know, wh whether he is playing or not playing. Um, so obviously, you know, uh, dealing with the ACL injury, not being able to go out there and average 30 points a game and shoot 50 from the field and 50 from three, like he did last year. Um, his responsibility is to continue to lead, bring positive energy. And I think as I talked to him today, I think you make sure he understands that Faku Composito is a rookie. Uh, Austin Rivers played 45 playoff games, you know, but obviously he's new to, to Denver. Uh, Marcus Howard, Shaq Harrison, those guys are two way players. So Jamal's experience these last two years in the playoffs is invaluable uh, on top of just bringing that positive leadership and energy that he always brings. So, um, you know, we all missed him like crazy. And it's great to have him back. And uh, I think he's willing to do whatever he can to help this team win. We can't score a point for us, Katie, but he can provide a lot of other things. Next, we'll go to Harrison Wind. Hey, Michael, you, you just mentioned him, Austin Rivers. I know he's questionable. Is he able to go tonight? Uh, I believe so. I'm you know, still kind of waiting final word from the training staff uh, to see where he's at in terms of uh, just being physically ready to play. You know, is he well enough to play? So I uh, do not have a definitive answer at this moment. And uh, we will wait to get word on that. Hopefully he can. I mean, we are already really, really, really thin in the backcourt. You know, obviously, uh, P.J. Dozier, Will Barton, Jamal Murray, that's two starters and one of the first guys off the bench for us. So uh, hopefully Austin's able to go because we need him. Next, we'll go to Ryan Blackburn. Coach, the Stars, they're going to get their shots. They're going to get their points. How much of this series is going to be around taking advantage of the time when Damian Lillard is on the bench and for the Blazers taking advantage when Nicola is on the bench? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's uh, each team's two best players. And um, as, as evident, the last two years we've made the playoffs, <laughs> the last 33 uh, games, I believe it is. Uh, you know, Nicola is not going to be on the bench a whole lot. <laughs> we just probably can't afford to have him on the bench a whole lot. Um, but those will always be really important minutes. I, I think whenever Dame is not in the game, CJ's in the game. For us, whenever Nicola's not in the game, Michael Porter's got to be in the game. Uh, you have to have your second option out there to give you a guy that you can play through. So can we survive uh, those minutes when Nicole is on the bench? We're going to have to find a way to. And if we're struggling to score during those minutes, well, that means our defense has to be great. Our game plan discipline has to be great. And our personnel discipline has to be great. And obviously uh, looking forward to see how that goes tonight. Next, we'll go to Leonardo Torres. Hi, Coach. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, do you think the ball movement and the shot selection will be the keys to win tonight? Um, yeah, I mean, that's how we play. You know, Leonardo, you've watched us all year long. You know that we try to be a ball movement team. We try to be a team that uh, generates a lot of assists, less one-on-one, -on -one, more ball movement, more body movement. 
And, uh, and that's, that's the key to generating open looks. So we have to make sure that we're moving the ball, we're taking care of the ball. Um, and that's the goal every time down is to generate an open look. Now the question is going to be, can we knock down open shots? And that's probably one of the bigger concerns I have going into this series is, will we be able to score enough to stay in the game? Uh, we know that Nicola is going to attract the crowd. Michael Porter is going to attract the crowd. Will the other guys on that roster be able to step up and make enough shots? Uh, after watching our guys all season, after watching this week, uh, I think our guys are more than ready for that challenge uh, that we're about to face. All right, we have time for one more here. We'll end with Katie Wingy. Coach, we spent so much time talking about how defending the three-point line will be a huge key for you guys in this series. But what goes into that? What goes into that game plan other than just running shooters off the three-point line? Well, yeah, it's it's the running shooters is probably the secondary part of it, Katie. Uh, you know, Damian Lillard, for example, he takes 10 and a half threes a game. Eight of those are pull-ups. So very rarely will you be in a runoff situation with Damian Lillard because usually that's when a guy does not have the ball. He receives it and you run him off the three-point line. Um, him and CJ do a great job of knocking down pull-up threes. So that's where you talk about your pickup points. Uh, you know, as they dribble the ball over half court, we cannot be down the floor. Uh, we can never have our feet inside the three-point line. Uh, and then all the pick and rolls and dribble handoffs that they run, which is a lot. They're one of the top tops in the NBA in both categories. Uh, you need your bigs to be at the level as well. And that's the only chance you have to guard great three-point shooters, especially off the bounce, is for the guards to be into and over those pick and rolls or handoffs and the big to be at the level. That opens up another can of worms. That opens up bigs in the pocket. It opens up the offensive glass. But if you're going to beat the number two offense in the NBA in a seven-game series, it's going to require great discipline and multiple effort. And I think our guys are ready for that. All right. That'll do it. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thank you, guys.